Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. So in this tutorial today, I'm going to be going over everything that you need to know to start working with paraffin wax for candles. Before I go into the tutorial part of this video, I'm just going to be going over a little bit about paraffin wax, giving you some more information so you have a better understanding of the wax you're working with. But this is one of the units in my new online candle making masterclass. In my online candle masterclass, I cover absolutely everything you need to know to start working with candles and multiple different types of waxes. I'm going to go from complete beginner, so if you've never worked with candles before, all the way up to intermediate and advanced knowledge. So there is a lot and a lot of different tutorials throughout so this is just one of the units in my online candle masterclass so you guys are getting a little bit of a taster sneak peek and if you want to know more go and check the link down below to go and find out I've got all the information there and you can also use the code word YouTube if you want to purchase my online candle masterclass to get a bit of a discount but anyway let's get into this tutorial so what is paraffin wax? So paraffin wax is a byproduct from oil um, and it does have a stigma around it because of that. Now it does get refined down and all the nasties do get taken out of it and it is considered an extremely safe wax to work with and to burn. Um, multiple tests have been done and there has been no sort of scientific studies ever found that has any long-term harmful effects or anything like that. So it is at the moment completely fine to use for candles, completely safe and I know a lot of it gets made in America and they do have quite strict rules for candle wax over there with um, being manufactured so it is it does have a bit of a reputation but it does have a lot of good things with the paraffin wax but because it obviously isn't a natural wax like soy wax or coconut wax or um, olive oil wax or um, beeswax which are all completely natural it does have that stigma around it so there are a lot of good things with paraffin wax one it's a lot stronger and a lot harder than soy wax so it is ideal for making pillar candles and it can also be really good in container candles you'll also find that a lot of wax blends so if it's a soy wax blend it's going to have a little bit of paraffin wax in it um, it helps stabilize a lot of natural waxes so paraffin is in a lot of other waxes that you might not know so unless you're buying a hundred percent soy wax or a hundred percent coconut wax if it just says coconut wax it's probably like a coconut wax blend or a soy wax blend and it probably will contain a little bit of paraffin wax to help give it stability it has a really low opacity. It has almost a translucent look and feel to it, which can be really cool when you're doing certain effects. Unlike soy wax or coconut wax that have a full opacity and they go and they set with quite a solid white base, the paraffin wax like this actually has that sort of like slightly translucent look and feel to it. Your paraffin wax generally always comes in a block. You can sometimes find it coming in flakes but you will generally always find it in a block. Paraffin waxes also have different types. So not all paraffin waxes are made the same. So you'll find some paraffin waxes that are designed more for pillar candles, just the same as soy wax, where you'll get soy wax for pillar candles and soy wax for container candles. You'll also get the same with paraffin wax and different brands have different advantages. And that's completely the same throughout all types of waxes. When you're buying from different brands, they're gonna have slightly different blends or there'll be slightly different ingredients when they are made. So definitely Definitely it is good to check around and try a few different waxes out because it isn't all the same. So I'm going to be using a paraffin wax that's designed for pillar candles because I'm going to be showing you some really cool pillar candles that you can do with paraffin wax. Paraffin wax has a lot higher melt and pour temperature than soy or any other kind of natural wax. So when you find working with it, you're going to be probably working with it a little bit hotter than what you would. So it needs to be melted down at a higher point and it also needs to be poured at a higher point to not get any imperfections. You'll find that frosting when you add color into your wax isn't as much of an issue when you work with a paraffin wax compared to say a soy wax. So that's another advantage that paraffin wax does have. And the majority of paraffin wax per kilo is a lot cheaper than all of the other natural waxes. So there's always pros and cons with different waxes. And that's why we choose to work with certain waxes for certain techniques or certain styles of candles and use other waxes for other techniques and other styles of candles. Now, because paraffin wax has to be 
melted at a higher point and has to be poured at a lower point, you need to find fragrances that can work with that. So if you have any fragrances that have a flash point lower than 60 degrees, then they're not going to be ideal with working with paraffin wax because a lot of paraffin waxes need to be poured above 80. So that is definitely something that you need to look in when you're going to be adding fragrance into paraffin wax. You can also blend paraffin wax with all different kinds of waxes to lower down that pouring temperature. But if you are pouring straight paraffin wax, it generally needs to be poured anywhere between 80 and 90. So uh, anything that's got a lower flash point than 60 is just not going to be ideal. When you start working with paraffin wax, you're going to hear a lot of terms about adding supplements or adding any additives into the wax. And these do a few different things. You can get ones that will help with UV resistance so that way if you are coloring your wax, it's not gonna fade over time. You can get ones that will help with the overall strength of your wax, with adding a shine, with making it contract a bit better. There's a whole bunch of different supplements out there that you can get. So they're either gonna be called multi-supplements, you can also get citric acid, or you can use what I'm using, which is a universal additive. When you do find them online for candle supply stores, they will list which supplements and what they kind of are effective with when you add them into your wax. I like this universal additive because it kind of does a little bit of everything. It gives strength to my pillar candles as well as a really nice shine. So I'm gonna be using this in my paraffin wax. Now it generally is one to 2% maximum for the amount of wax. So if you've got 100 grams of wax, you'd wanna do like one to two grams absolutely max of your universal additive. Because if you wanna add too much in, you can have the opposite effect where it can affect the structure of your candle because you're adding too much of a third element into that wax. So you just need to be really careful with the amount. A little goes a really long way and when you do your first candle and you see how great it looks with the additives in it, it is tempting to add more than necessarily set more than necessary because you will think that it will make your candle even better but it can affect the candle if you do add a, too much of your additives in. For the first tutorial that I'm going to be showing you I'm going to be using a hundred grams of my paraffin wax with two grams of my universal additive and then once that's off the heat and it has cooled down to my pouring temperature I'm then going to add seven grams in of fragrance. Now fragrance is completely optional especially when you are doing decorative pillar candles because it's not necessary why people would buy those candles because they might be buying them just because they look cute than necessarily like the fragrance for it. Unlike you know when you do a container candle where people are purchasing them just for the smell. So fragrance is optional in this but if you want to add that in you want to add it in right when you get it to its coolest point to pour and you want to look for quality fragrances that have a higher flash point when working with paraffin. While my paraffin wax is melting down I'm going to start prepping my candle molds. So for this one I'm using the clear plastic candle molds and you can get them like this where it comes in two parts which is the one I personally prefer but you can also get them like this where it's one whole part. Now I do find these are a little bit harder to get out because you obviously cannot take the top off and give it a gentle push because you've got the plastic there. So if I can, I always buy the ones that have the two parts, but you can definitely use these ones as well. You just kind of have to go for what's available in the sort of style and size that you like. The reason why these plastic ones are really good for these techniques is because it allows me to have the ability to see what I'm doing. Now, I really do like the metal pin candle molds that I have used previously. But the thing with that is I cannot see what I'm doing because obviously the mold is solid. So sometimes it is good to have these clear plastic ones because it lets you have the ability to see what's happening inside the candle. Now, when you do use these, you wanna make sure that you give them a really good clean with alcohol. So I've done that previously. I've just used an alcohol spray and some paper towel and the inside is nice and clean. And you just wanna be really careful not to add your fingers if you've got any moisturizer or stuff because it can leave marks on these molds and then that will set into the candle and you won't get a really nice, even, perfect finish to your candle. Now, what I need to do is I need to add a wick into this because it doesn't have a pin. It's not going to set with a hole for me to place my wick through. So I need to do a few different steps when I am working with this mold compared to my metal molds. Now you can use wicks that you would use for container candles that already have 
um, the metal base to them and you can just cut those off. But the reason why I like to use sort of the cord wick on the roll is if I do have a very big mold or just longer molds like this, it just lets me measure out and get one that will fit accurately. I find a lot of the time with the wicks that are done for your container candles, they're going to be a lot shorter because generally your candle containers are shorter and they won't fit every mold. So these are really helpful to have. They also come in different sizes. So you can get one, two, three and keep going up and obviously the wick gets bigger so therefore if you're making a bigger pillar you would want to go for a bigger wick so I really like these um, it's really handy and it's really cost effective so these are great for pillar molds so I like to make sure I've got a little bit extra on both ends so overcut them a little bit so just like that now you've got to remember too that's going to add a little bit extra so that's going to be a great amount. It's going to give me a little bit on each side so that way it's easier to pull out when I do remove this. So you'll find too with these, when you cut them, they tend to start to fray. So there's a really simple trick to get these to fit through because if this is frayed and I'm trying to thread it through this hole, it's not going to go through and I'm going to really struggle. So I'm going to show you a really simple trick to kind of fix that because they will fray and it's a big issue trying to get them through. To fit in. So some of my paraffin wax has already started to melt and this is the trick that I'm going to do. I'm actually going to dip my wick and it's going to give it a wax coating and that's going to help with that fraying because it's going to be, make it a lot easier to fit through that little opening. So you don't need to do the whole thing but just a little bit. So this end now has that paraffin wax. Once it's cooled down a bit you can slide it along, take off any of that excess wax wax but now this has a nice wax coating and it's going to be a lot more strong and stable and it's not going to be as flexible as just cotton just like that and it makes it so much easier to poke through than when you're trying to do it without it having that wax coating and look it's come straight through so that's a little trick that I like to do whenever I am working with just a braided cord now I have that through, I can then pop my second part to my mold on top, push that down like that, nice and secure. And now with this end, we want to do the same that we've done with our previous pillar molds. And that is just a little bit of glue tack or blue tack or whatever you call it. Just a little bit of something that's going to one, hold your wick into place so it won't just slide out as you're working with it but also to just stop, prevent any wax that might escape from that hole. And now I have a wicked up mold. So the next step that I'm going to do for this particular technique is I need to add some tape as a guideline. So you can choose to add your tape wherever you would like it, but all this is gonna do is just help you get a guideline for when you add your color in, just to make sure that you're going around the whole area evenly and it will give you more accuracy to this a technique. Now I kind of like to leave just probably like a centimeter, maybe a little bit more, but it's completely up to you. So this is also why it's important to have a clear mold because this is gonna be allow me to see. If I was doing this technique on a metal mold, I wouldn't be able to see the tape on the inside. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm just using painter's tape, but obviously whatever tape you have on hand. It's not really about the tape, it's more about having a guide for when you add the color in. So for this one in particular, I'm gonna be using three colors and you definitely need to use liquid dyes to do this technique. So I've got a peach, a hot pink, and a yellow. And I'm going to be adding that on the inside of the mold, just a tiny little drop and alternating that the whole way around. Now I've just placed on some gloves. This is not essential, but these colors do tend to stain. They're super strong. So just by popping some gloves on, I'm just gonna be protecting my hands from being multicolored. Gonna start with my yellow and you're going to need your metal skewer again. Now you want the, tiny, the tiniest amount of color. This color is so strong and a little bit goes a really long way. And the technique that we're going to be doing is placing alternating dots around the outside so that way when we pour the hot wax in, it actually makes the color bleed down and you get a really cool striped effect. So the easiest way I found is 
and the smallest amount you want the smallest amount of color so I do one side and then you alternate it I might just even stick the wick down the bottom so it doesn't get in the way while I'm doing this and then I'm just going to do on the other side just the smallest amount of color a very very tiny and you can already see that little drop has expanded out and it's so even that tiny amount goes to twice its size and then I just go to the other side and I do another And once you're happy with your first lot of dots, you can then swap your color and just repeat that process. So my wax is sitting just under 90 and this is the perfect temperature to pour. Now with paraffin wax you always pour a little bit hotter than what you would say normally with a soy wax because it just has that higher melt point. So when you do pour you want to make sure that you get it right down the center. We don't want to be pouring down one side because that's obviously going to make one side of the colors melt faster and we're not going to get even pattern the whole way around. So just make sure that you do pour it down the center. And this is my finished candle. I just let it sit for a day before I did demold it as I like to let the wax get really hard before I do pull them out of the mold. If you do your candle right, it should be easily pulled from your mold. You shouldn't have to struggle with that. This technique also works great on any sort of shape or size mold. You get some really cool effects from this. For the next paraffin wax pillar candle I'm going to be making, I'm going to be showing a different technique. For this one we need to be using 100% paraffin wax because otherwise I find when you do work with soy wax or a soy wax blend, you don't get the same sort of effect. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to make our sort of glass chips to go in to our candle. And obviously we're not going to be using real glass, we're going to be making that out of our paraffin wax. But it does look kind of like a stained glass sort of glass chips effect when we do finish it. So I've got some baking paper here and I'm just going to fold it and make a little tray. Now if you do have a tray you could use that as well and line that with baking paper but you don't necessarily need one because we're not pouring that much wax into it. Just like that, enough that it creates a little bit of a dam. Now if you wanted to, you could staple just to make sure it's a little bit more sturdy, but that is going to be fine. You also want to make sure that your table is nice and level for when you pour your wax in. Now I've got 25 grams of paraffin wax and that's going to be my first colour. So I'm going to be colouring that with a blue. So I've got a wedge wood blue, but you could do whatever colours you like. So because this one's strong, I'm just going to do a little drop and I'm going to colour that wax just like that and now my Wedgwood Blue Paraffin Wax is at the correct temperature I can just pour it across my little tray that I've made and then I'm going to let that set
This part is super simple because all we're trying to do is create some rough shapes and break it just down into smaller pieces. So it doesn't need to be precise or pretty, it just needs to be broken down into pieces that are going to be able to fit into our mold. So if you've got a larger mold, you could keep your pieces quite big. If you've got a smaller mold like I do, you can then make them even smaller. So something along those lines. My power from wax is sitting around 90, so I'm gonna pour a little bit into my mold. Just in the center. And then I'm gonna start by getting my sort of wax glass chips. And I'm gonna be filling this up halfway with one color and then halfway with another color. Now you don't want to do too many, but you still want to have a decent amount. And once you're kind of sitting at the halfway mark, you can grab your other color and start adding that one in. Just making sure that you keep your wick in the center and I'm not trying to compact these down, I'm just sprinkling them around the wick. With this particular effect that we're trying to create with this candle, it's really important to get your clear paraffin wax at the correct temperature. If you pour it too hot, you're gonna find that it's gonna melt all of your little wax glass chips too much, and you're just gonna end up with two solid colors. Or if you pour it too cold, it won't melt them enough and won't create that desired effect that we are trying to achieve. So around 90 is generally the perfect pouring temperature. One thing you might notice when you are working with paraffin wax is because you're pouring it a lot hotter than what you would a soy wax, you do tend to get sinkholes just like that because the wax is being poured at a higher temperature which then can cause air pockets and sinkholes. And you don't generally find this as much with soy wax because soy wax you do pour at a cooler temperature. But it's really easy to fix, all you need to do is melt down some more paraffin wax and just fill those areas that you've got sinkholes. Now you don't have to do it perfect because you can always do the trick that I've shown you before where you get your hot plate and some baking paper and you smooth down the bottom that way. But we're just pouring some wax in just to fill those gaps. And it's just something that occurs when you do work with paraffin wax. And this is a finished candle. You've got a really beautiful ombre sea glass effect. I also did this pink one in my metal mold. It's a little bit harder to work with a metal mold because you obviously can't see through it. So you don't know if you're putting even amounts of each color in. With this one, I did a dark pink, a mid-tone pink, and then a light pink to give even more of an ombre effect, but both turned out amazing. And this is such an easy technique, but yeah, you get such stunning candles. Let me know what your thoughts are on the candles that I have just made, or if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment box below. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It always helps me out. And if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe because I post candle tutorials all the time. And if you want more information about my latest online masterclass with everything you need to know to get started in candle making, then click on the link below and don't forget to use the code word YouTube to get a percentage off. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do you want to learn how you can create your own cake and dessert themed candles? Work with multiple different types of waxes like paraffin, beeswax, gel wax, and soy wax. Make embeds and molds as well as multiple different styles of pillar candles. Then my new online candle masterclass is for you. I cover absolutely everything that you need to know even if you're starting out as a complete beginner like fragrances, wick, and wax types as well as going up to intermediate knowledge. There are over eight different candle making tutorials in this online masterclass, covering a new technique in each video. For more information about my online candle masterclass and how to purchase, just click on the link.